Welcome to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe for free always at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, on with the show. I just finished watching Touch With Fire, starring Katie Holmes and Luke Kirby as a set, a couple who are both stricken with the illness of bipolar disorder type one. And the reason this struck me as a a film worth watching is because I myself have been diagnosed as bipolar type one. And I must admit, when I watch movies about it, they sort of fail to capture what happens to you when you are bipolar. And they didn't really focus very much on the mania side. Uh, I'm sorry, got that opposite. They didn't focus very much on the depression side, although there were some powerful scenes showing the depressive side, but mostly they focused on mania. And a lot of it takes place inside a hospital, which is the place that bipolar one individuals are actually really kind of destined to wind up because there is no way to tell if someone is bipolar one. Uh, even in the, uh, the DSM-5, it clearly states that a period of mania without sleep must be present for a week uh, at least. And I have seen in my travels that there are many bipolars who experience that kind of in a blindsided way, just hits them. And it lasts a lot longer than a week. And mania can be described as... the fire and fire and ice you feel you can do anything you feel your superhero traits come out and generally you become irritable with other people because they don't understand what you're talking about and I think that this film really really captures it well now mind you film can never really capture what it's like to be going through a manic episode but you can see in both the characters uh, enjoyment, uh, pleasure, happiness when they are manic. But as you know, when you are a bipolar sufferer, that is often short-lived and you become reckless and you go on spending sprees and you go on sex sprees. I never really did that, but... uh, sort of the equivalent and uh it it produces uh, almost a pain a physical pain because you're unable to get outside of yourself which is all you want to do and so it's bad enough when you suffer from it but to just think and observe this film where two people fall in love while manic while glorifying the words of uh, Lord Byron and uh, Herman Hess and uh, Edgar Allan Poe and so, so many more, Sylvia Plath. Um, and they, they actually quote from a book by K. Redfield Jameson, who I guess I could call her a hero of mine because she was able to publish a book about being bipolar. Of course, she has the backing of Johns Hopkins University, whereas I don't. But I really have been feeling for many years that my next book should be about being a bipolar professional, living with bipolar disorder. Um, The main reason for that is I am medicated and have been for 25 years. So the only time 
it really comes back to be significant. Looks like it. I press pause by example, by accident. Anyways, uh, it's showing the credits now. I'm playing some sort of uh, fairy-like music because you really feel like you are in an other world when you're manic. All I can tell you is that I respond very well to lithium and I've maintained a career for, you know, going on 30 years now of teaching English, of teaching K-12, of teaching fourth and fifth grade mostly. I taught third grade for a total of three years and I also taught high school for, I guess it would have been a semester. Um, But... I think for me, it took losing all that to understand the importance of medication and the importance of finding, I I hate the word normal, but finding that place of normalcy where you aren't always strung out and trying to achieve things that are probably unattainable. And that has been my life's work uh, to be a teacher and to be living with uh, profound moon disorder, like bipolar one. And I feel comfortable coming out about it because of K. Redfield Jameson, because of feedback I've gotten from people throughout my career that I'm wonderful and, and I've touched their lives as their teacher and friends and family, but most of all the fact that I remain medicated to this day and I will never uh, feel comfortable stopping my medication. This is a wonderful film. If you want to know what it looks like, I hope that you will buy my book that's coming out. It's called Bipolar Professional. I've self-published it, and uh, it should be out hopefully before Christmas. And if you're in my inner circle, you'll be getting a copy of it for free. That's what I'm going to do for my gifts this year, and I'm getting closer and closer and closer And I don't burn out and I don't hit rock bottom. One thing to remember too that they did portray in this film that is very true. Uh, Greg Laurie, Pastor Greg Laurie was a huge uh, influence on me in my uh, years when I was involved with the church. And one thing he said uh, in terms of living in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit, uh, with the gifts of the Spirit and such, he said... You know, it's, it's very important that you remember that it's not how high you jump, but how straight you walk when you hit the ground again. And I heard that many, many years ago before I even started teaching K-12. Uh, and I have to remember that. And I think if you are bipolar, there's nothing glamorous about it except for the fact that you've defeated it or that you're keeping it under control. And... Any rational person can see when you're doing that. You don't have to be bipolar to see that. You're not peeling back the layers of reality or this planet or imagining yourself on another planet or all the things that really are brought up in this movie that you do think when you're bipolar. I was always told that I was gifted in school and I absolutely was a gifted little guy, but I was also tortured mostly in my teen years and then later in my uh, late 20s which is when it manifests itself and so I'm on the lookout for my kids if they ever have it mostly because you become reckless there's really nothing uh, super dangerous about mania as long as you keep it under control with medication especially but even you know I there have been times in my life where I've run out of medication and you know luckily nothing happened but I know what it can feel like to go back to being off medication, and it is very, 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 very tempting. Uh, But then you think of the damage that it has caused. Um, And my life is so wonderful right now. I have wonderful kids. You know, I have wonderful family around me at all times, people that care about me, people that reach out to me, see how I'm doing. And when you give in to the disorder and you stop taking medication, it puts you in a very dangerous, uh, compromised position. 
and I would never do that to my loved ones. So that's the main reason that I remain medicated, but also to my profession. And I am a bipolar professional, and from what I understand, there are quite a few in my field that live with it. I just, you don't always meet them because they aren't always vocal about it. But reading K. Redfield Jemison's book was so awe-inspiring for me when I did read it years ago. And um, once you learn things as a bipolar, you do need a little bit of a reminder now and then. But you don't really have to learn them again. They're, they're powerful if your mind is open to it. So I have to see my mind as a, a fine instrument that only I really can take care of. Uh, and I will say, too, that when you are bipolar, it is, uh, it's advisable to not marry because you, you do have such extreme needs and you aren't always reliable. But again, as long as you stay medicated, I might argue that you could be married, but I was married to a normal brain person for 19 years, and I think it was very um, sort of pompous of me to think that I could be a normal brained partner to her. But the jury's still out on that. Who knows? Maybe I'll meet someone one day and they'd be willing to take the risk again. But I don't think uh, you should marry anybody who doesn't completely know what they're getting into because I think it's a lot more, especially at home, than uh, people realize. But I'm very pleased with where I'm at now in my life. I'm 54 years old. Uh, from what I understand, I'm, I'm able to draw my retirement in six years. So pretty, pretty much at the end of the marathon, I'd say. And there have been so many wonderful memories and so many wonderful people that have touched my life and that I've touched their life. And it's been difficult not being able to share about it, but... I've made the decision here in the, the, the sunset of my career because uh, I have other options of making money if, if, you know, if it didn't work out again, but I don't anticipate that happening. Um, and I really do love teaching college and, and I, I think I found my niche and I think I needed to go through really a lifetime of dealing with my disorder and understanding how it works and staying medicated and learning the ins and outs of the medical system. and and how to take care of myself. But I, I don't want people to be reckless, especially younger people that have been diagnosed because you you pose a great risk to yourself when you enter the professional world because it it is highly demanding. And even though, you know, you, you can be a great leader, in fact, many bipolar leaders are just at the cream of the crop. And you can, you read about them in my book, and artists and you know loving family members but it's not something that we've known about long enough to really guarantee anybody that you're going to be okay until you've really been through years and years and years and years of it and stayed on your medication which i have so my students are very important to me and i would never put them at risk i don't think they're at risk at all i think uh Bipolars do see uh, a lot um, because they have that manic side, that depressive side. And as long as, you know, they they feel that they can take the risk and, uh, and that they are respected in their field and that they actually help the world by being a bipolar professional, then I think it's a wonderful thing and I encourage them, but... You just should not be reckless about choosing a career, especially about borrowing money to uh, go down a road for a career because it, you're not someone that necessarily has the same um, challenges as a regular brain individual. And it's a very complex thing. It's a very personal thing. But since I'm writing a book about it and, of course, talking about it on my podcast more and more, uh, I plan to look at some more movies in the next few weeks that focus on bipolar. But I will tell you, and I will leave you with, with this, that you know, if you want to know more, you got to buy the book. <laughs> it's called Bipolar Professional. Uh, and you can go to my site to find out how to get it, rileyonfilm.com. And um, 
the treasures that you will find, this is a poem I wrote years back, will be in your mind. So take good care of it. The instrument is fine. A spirit like the wind will surely enter in. So be silent and wait for it to begin. Thanks a lot for listening. I will see you next time. Thank you for listening to Riley on Film. I'm your host, Damian Riley. You can find out more and subscribe always for free at RileyOnFilm.com. Now, have a great day.